My guest today is Jay Tower. Jay, how are you? Good. Dave, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Welcome to Chicago. Thank you. Uh, you're, um, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, so today, you and I are going to talk about the .NET CLI, or Command Line Interface. Command Line Interface. How long has .NET had a CLI? Well, it's funny you should ask that. Uh, it depends on how you define it. Um, hmm. There have been command line tools for .NET. Like csc.exe? Yeah, like the, the C Sharp compiler, the VB compiler, uh, MS Build, things like that okay. have had uh, command line interfaces since the beginning. Uh, right. But the .NET CLI for .NET Core has been around just since the beginning of .NET Core. And uh, how is that different from just these... Uh command line tools. Yeah, so it's different, and I, I would say in a couple of ways. One of the ways is that it brings kind of all of the .NET tooling together under a single tool. Okay. Uh, and then the other way it's different is that it was sort of reimagined as a first-class citizen. Uh, and what I mean by that is all of those other tools were um, sort of, oh yeah, and we also have a command line interface for this. Kind of an afterthought. Uh, a bit of an afterthought, maybe. Um, but uh, you know, for the .NET CLI that was from the ground up, .NET Core was built with that in cool. mind. Hmm. Well, what kind of things does the CLI do? So if you think about the stuff that Visual Studio does for most of us on a daily basis, like builds and restoring our NuGet packages okay. and running the debugger for us and uh, those types of things, but also like packaging NuGet packages and deploying things. Um, so the .NET CLI can do all of that stuff for you. Hmm. So uh, this is, um uh, is it a just one command at a time, or is there some structure to it? Like, uh, are there loops and uh, conditional logic and things that you know, yeah, so programming for, languages? Uh, yeah, it's mu it's really just a command line interface, so it's okay. meant to be something that's used uh, either interactively by a developer okay. or as part of commands in a script, like say a DevOps pipeline or something like that. Okay, what are you using it for? Me personally, yeah. uh, probably the most common thing that I use the CLI for is actually for DevOps. So when you're trying to automate uh, a build, a uh, release, maybe a packaging of something uh, when you're d with your .NET Core code, it makes a lot of sense not to install the whole Visual Studio IDE on your build computer or build agent. Okay, so you're not using it interactively at all. You're using it for creating scripts and then calling those I scripts. I use it from. interactively too sometimes, you but uh, you know, Visual Studio does a lot of it for you as well. So. If you're using Visual Studio, you don't necessarily need to think about the CLI quite right. as much. So, uh, so maybe if you don't have, if you're on a machine that doesn't have Visual Studio installed, or a machine that, uh, or you don't, you just can't be bothered to wait <laughs> 60 seconds to launch <laughs> that <laughs> application. Right. Or maybe, uh, maybe you have an editor that you prefer, or maybe you're on an operating system on your computer that doesn't have a Visual Studio, like oh, Linux, for example. Good point. Uh, yeah. uh, well, so I actually have a uh, a laptop that has Visual Studio installed, and that's pretty much the only one that I use for doing development. Do I even need to even think about the CLI? Uh, you may not need to think about it, but um, one of the reasons that the CLI exists and why it's a f important that it's a first-class citizen in the .NET world now is, that, uh, is the automated builds that we talked about. So right. if you end up setting up a DevOps pipeline, you are gonna be thinking about the CLI. Uh, but another reason is that uh, you might be working on a team now with some different developers that have different preferences. Maybe some of them like to use different editors on Mac OS, and maybe they're not a Visual Studio user. Mm -hmm. and in that case, if you want to be able to collaborate together on a .NET Core project and sort of bring your own operating system, bring your own editor, uh, the .NET CLI will be important for your team so that everybody is uh, able to use the same tooling. Okay. Um, can you give me an idea of what the syntax looks like? Is it uh, sure. usually when people build a CLI, they try to be consistent? You yeah. Know, noun, verb, or verb, noun, or exactly. Yeah. So the commands basically break down into four pieces. There's the actual .NET, uh, the word dot net, uh -huh. which is the actual runner for the .NET CLI. So any .NET CLI command is going to start with that dot net. Mm -hmm. Is that a separate word uh, or command, or is that just like the prefix to existing commands? It's the it's the, basically it's the uh, it's the vehicle that runs all of the .NET CLI. So it's okay. the actual executable. So you running. say .NET space something else? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the second component of any CLI command is going to be the actual command. So it would be something like build or run or package, mm -hmm. uh, restore. Uh, okay, that's a are, verb. Those are the verbs. Yep, that's what you're trying to do. Uh, and then you want to be able to provide uh, both uh, the third and fourth parts, which are the arguments and the options. So the arguments would be something like if you were doing a build 
and you wanted to say, I want to build this project file, uh, or I want to build um, this um, solution file, that would be your argument. And then an option would be, I want the output to go to this directory, or I want to do a release or a debug configuration on this build, those types of things. Okay, that sounds a lot like the, uh, the Azure CLI. It is, uh, yeah. Distinct from the pattern that PowerShell uses, which is more noun verb. That's true, yeah, it is a bit different than, uh, than PowerShell script, but um, if you look at some of the more popular CLIs that are out there right now, so you mentioned the Azure CLI, uh, NPM is another one that okay. web front-end web developers are using a lot, uh, it actually works very similar to those. No, that makes sense. I think the reason the Azure CLI is built that way is because a lot of Linux CLIs right. use that pattern as yep. well. Um, yep, so exactly. It's certainly not coincidence. Uh, and now, if, uh, how do I get the CLI on my machine? Well, so what's great is if you install the .NET SDK, mm -hmm. you have the it's .NET CLI. Yep. Hmm. So it's that easy. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Uh, no, I think that's a pretty great overview. It's actually, CLI is funny because it scares people, uh, but it's actually pretty simple. If yeah. you already know Visual Studio and you know I want this project to build or I want this project's NuGet packages to restore, you really are already thinking in your head the commands that you need to know from the CLI. Yeah, so the, basically the capabilities of Visual Studio are the capabilities of It's very similar, yeah. Is there, uh, uh, is there documentation on looking up commands? Yep, so if you want to learn it, a great place to start is the docs.microsoft.com mm -hmm. site. Um, you can just search for the .NET Core CLI on there and um, it has a great tutorial to get you started. What about, um, does, uh, do you get any help with the syntax at all? In other words, does, as I'm typing this, does it know, um, I don't know, if I press tab, for example, I'm halfway through a word, it will yeah. autocomplete, or if I've put .NET in, uh, can I, will, is it smart enough to know what the available commands are past .NET? Yeah, so if you want tab completion, you can have that. It's not set up by default, no, okay. depending on your platform, uh, but actually the, the Microsoft Docs site tells you how to do tab completion uh, oh. and set that up. So that's a great place to start for that. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, something you have to install to do or? Uh, it's some simple setup, okay. basically, so that um, the command line interface is aware of, of, of what, or the, I'm sorry, the shell that you're using is aware of what's available in that command line. Uh, okay. Um, and then at any point in a command, if you don't know what to type next, you could always do dash dash help. Oh, and more documentation. It'll like give this. you some online yeah, documentation right there in your command line interface. Uh, okay. Thanks. All right. I think that's enough. Yeah, it's perfect. That's, that's a nice simple tool. And it is. got a nice short show. Sounds Where good. are you speaking next? Uh, well, I'm speaking tomorrow here at VS Live in Chicago. Uh, and then after. The show won't be out by then. Okay. Well, <laughs> then uh, the next time after that, I'm. I think I'm speaking in, uh, I think might be my next talk is actually in Tech Bash, which is in the Poconos oh, in I've Pennsylvania. Been there. Yeah, yeah, I like that conference. Yeah, yeah. They it's do a nice water job. park. Yeah, it's a water <laughs> park. So similar to some of those other conferences that take place at Kalahari <laughs> Resorts. I've never been to a bad water park <laughs> conference. <laughs> you may have heard of some of them. <laughs> I go to mention that conference, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Jay, thanks so much. So, yeah, thank you, David. One of my favorite things about being at a conference like VS Live today in Chicago is seeing old friends, meeting new friends, and getting to share information about new technology.